This video is about concept mapping and a great tool called CMAP Tools, which is free for you to download at any time. The thing that keep in mind about concept mapping is it's a great thing for classroom situations or for online situations because what it allows students to do is show how they're thinking about a particular topic or subject or chapter or book that they may have read which really allows the teacher to get a chance to uh, see whether or not the student is fully understanding the material that they want them to comprehend. So let's take a look and see uh, what's out there in terms of concept mapping. This is an example of a great uh, free uh, tool that's available for you to download. Other ones similar to it cost money like Inspiration or My Webspiration or a whole host of other ones. But this one's good and I think you'll see why in just a few minutes. I'm going to move fairly quickly through this, but as uh, the, one of the great benefits of an online video is that you can stop and start it uh, at any time in case I'm moving too quickly. But uh, hopefully uh, it will take about uh, five or ten minutes to go through all this. First thing that I want to point out about concept mapping is that there's a website that you can go to to download this, and that's the first thing that you should be able to do and so I want you to start with that. It's a fairly easy process, so if you're not familiar with how to download software and put it onto your computer, this is a great opportunity. And this will work on both your Mac and your PC. It, uh, I don't believe that there's anything out there for the iPad yet for this. But the website I want you to go to is cmap.ihmc.us. So that's cmap.ihmc.us. When you get there, there's uh, uh, two little icons right at the top here, and you want to click on the left one because the left one allows you to go in and click on the CMAP Tools Download Information and Forms. And they do want some information from you, uh, but do keep in mind this is free, so it's a pretty good exchange. They want some information about your organization and how you're going to be using it. So once you've done that, it'll allow you to go ahead and download it and install it right onto your computer. So go ahead and do that first, and then pick up, and we'll get started with how to actually use the program. Now, I'm using a Mac here, and over here, I already have CMAPs open. So I'm going to go, and I call it CMAPs Interchangeable. It's really called CMAP Tools. So I click on it, and I opened it up, and you can see that there's all these things that are here for me to use. And CMAP Tools is a really powerful thing because you could actually share your work with others and with your instructor who might have a site and you could share it with other uh, students for them to see. But probably the most important thing that you want to do is actually just start a brand new CMAP. So I want you to start out by just choosing something really basic and simple. You're just going to start a new CMAP and now I'm going to expand this by just clicking on this little green uh, button or you could just expand it by grabbing onto one of the lower right corners and expanding it. The first thing to do is you're going to double click to create a concept. So the concept would be anything from chapter one to nuclear science to all about me. So I'm going to go ahead and double click on here and let's just start with a really basic one. This should probably be one of the first things you do is just click on, uh, on the screen and just get going. So I'm going to double click on here. Let me tell you a little bit about the things that I do. I'm going to do hobbies. And I'm going to do, uh, let's just imagine we do something with family. And let's just say that we've also got uh, pets in my family. Okay. Now, the important thing is to connect all of these things. So let's get a couple more things to connect. I'm going to put out here uh, that I have a brother. In most cases, you might actually put in the name of that person. But generally what I want you to do is just get a few ideas out there to work with. And let me just show you how all this works. Let's go back to me. This is all about me. So I want to expand this. I want to connect things now. But this is an arrow right here in the middle. So I'm going to click and expand it right over here to family. Well, if I click back here on me, I can now say, well, I'm going to connect that. And I'm going to connect that. Same idea here with expanding to here, here, 
and here. All right. Now, this is all fun to do uh, something like this, uh, all about me, but probably what's going to be more important is how would you actually do this in terms of an educational project. So you need to think about what the topic is that you're actually doing, and then you have to decide, well, what, how would you break up that topic into various different uh, attributes, and how would you sublink them into other areas? And what if an idea is actually interrelated throughout something else? There's a lot of things to keep in mind. And the other thing is, you have to probably also talk about the interrelationship. It's really important to say uh, how it is a part of it. And you might put in, has a family. So, um, me has a family. That doesn't make so much, it's not grammatically correct, but uh, uh, has always had pets, okay? And it's important to always include the verb or the link that actually explains what the relationship is between the two items so that it almost is a complete sentence. And that's really another way of showing how you fully understand a concept. All right, well, let's take a look at a couple other examples of ones uh, that we have it might be worthwhile taking a look at. Uh, first off, uh, what's going to be really helpful is that you actually, actually understand a few more things about how this works. I can click on any one of these and expand it by clicking on the corner. I can make it tall and narrow or short and fat. And I can also go in and change some of the other uh, attributes that are found here. Um, and there's a variety of different things to choose from. But I'm not going to necessarily use all of those. The thing that's most important for me is to go up here to Format and Styles. So in the styles here, I can actually go ahead and I can start to color code these things. Well, it might be a pain to have to do each one of these, especially if you have a, a bunch of them. So I'm actually going to highlight them. Notice I start up here and I click and I'm highlighting all of those things that are there. Okay, So I'm going to now go and make all of those yellow. Okay, Now I have a brother who might kind of be a pet and how would I, here let's just go ahead and type in, uh, there we go. kind of like a pet, okay? Well, how can I show an interrelationship between these two? Well, if I hold down Command on my Mac or on your PC, it might be a Windows button, I can highlight both of those, and I can actually then change the shape to a circle. So now you're starting to see that there's interrelationships, not only with that, but I could, if I want to, put a shadow of pink underneath it. I could actually put things in capital letters, wide variety of things to choose from as to how to do these things. All right, so you're starting to see how you can move these things around the screen. And if I highlight all of these, what's nice is I can move them down to a completely different part. Okay, And I can move all of these around the screen. Ultimately, after you've done a lot of work on this, you've really pulled together all your thoughts, hopefully it really starts to settle in and the concepts become clearer to you. So it's a great way to reinforce some reading or whatever that you're studying. Here's an example of a finished uh, product that actually took several weeks of work because what it, this actually com did was combined three or four weeks of reading and putting it all together. This is probably one of the best that I've seen and uh, it probably took quite a bit of time to do but it is showing you what is possible in terms of doing a concept map. So that's just an idea of what to uh, aspire to. All right, now going back to this, the important thing is that now as a student, you need to probably send this to your instructor so your instructor understands or knows that you understand the uh, information. So once you have this, now the important thing is to go up to File, and you're now going to export this to be able to send it to your instructor. So you're going to go to Export CMAP, and it's going to be an image file. 
And the great thing is that the file format, JPEG, pops right up. That's a very standard one that most digital cameras and a wide variety, almost every single computer will open that up. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to call this uh, my CMAP about me. And I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I put that into a place where I can find it later on, uh, like my desktop or wide variety of places that I can choose to put it into. Here's my desktop. And then when I go ahead and save that, that CMAP has now been successfully uh, exported. And so now I actually have that uh, ready to go. And if I can find it, here it is. Okay, so I have just made a picture that I can now attach into an email and send to my instructor that shows how I fully understand the material that has been assigned. So I hope this has been helpful, and uh, good luck with uh, making your first concept map. Thanks.